Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. I thought I'd show you today Ethan O'Kane. And you might be thinking, who's Ethan O'Kane, Matt? Well... So I have my scouts going out looking at all the Northern Irish and Irish youth intakes to basically sign, uh, see if we can pick up some players. We have done a few, but this guy uh, is a little bit different. He is one of those players that was in there and they wanted like £90,000, but we've actually ended up paying four uh, with some instalments taking it to like 10 k which is pretty good. Um, I wasn't expecting him to be as good as he is, to be honest. The potential's right there, but the fact that his current ability makes him one of the best centre-backs at the club already at the age of 16 is is interesting. He's a hot prospect. He's not on a lot of money. He's got 16 headers. Now, he is only five foot nine. I Maybe he'll grow a tiny bit more. I, I don't really know. Um, but I think he's a really solid centre-back for this team, and for the price, you couldn't really say no. To sign a player for four grand that's going to easily get first-team games in League One that's what we want to do. That's what we need to do in this save. Really, really pleased to bolster the defence with that. Firstly, we had a bid from West Brom for Gray of £2.8 million. I don't know why. It was the final day of the, sea, uh, the transfer window, so people were starting to get a bit desperate, and I think that's probably why. We had some big old bids. Um, bids of over £1.5 for Louis Molden as well. We're getting over million pound bids for players in League One, which is pretty cool. Ipswich actually sold a player uh, for, uh, for like, I think it's Callum Sambridge, who used to play for Salford in the first season, or second season, uh, for £8 million, which is crazy amounts of money to be leaving clubs in league one for eight million quid but it's just nice to see that if we need the money we, we've definitely got some assets at this club that are worth big money hopefully though we'll be able to hang on to them also i've sold kane hemmings um coventry came in on the final day with a twenty thousand pound bid i put a 50 percent of next sale fee clause in but i just wanted rid mainly just to get his wages off the bill you know he was on like nearly a thousand pound a week and he weren't playing for us. He was never going to get a game. I'd rather play JTB uh, over him as a backup. And Chris Thorpe is the main one. Uh, so I figured, let's just get some money for him. Gets him off the wage bill and gets him out of the club. Kane Hemmings has not been a success. It was time to cash in. The best part of Akora is his name fitting into the chant to the tune of Seven Nation Army. Instant fan favourite. I expect the streets of Stockport to ring out with O oh, John Akoro for many seasons to come. Yeah, it kind of, I suppose you could make it Johnny Akoro to give it more of a, a bounce to it, which kind of works with his old cereal brand. So good promotion for him and his company. Callum Gribbin bought a pair of socks for the homeless in Manchester. Unfortunately, he lost the socks on a night, a late night bender on Christmas Eve. He was forced to publicly apologise after the story was in Manchester Evening New. I thought I said a pair of socks for all of them, meaning like one pair of socks for them all to share. You could do better than that, Callum. Come on. Uh, we've also got a lot of players out with colds and flu uh, at the moment, which is a bit of a pain. Some of them have come back now. I did send every single one home when it came up to try and prevent this, but we still got a few players out with viruses and colds and whatnot, which is a bit of a shame. But it was luckily squad players like Jack Payne and people like that. So not too bad. Right. I've watched these matches on Comprehensive. I had a bit of extra time than I thought I did. So I thought I'd sit there, take a look at Comprehensive and try to work out what we can do. And I think I've I think, once again, I think I've actually come up with some changes that I think are going to make permanent differences to the team now because we've been thinking like a non-league club. We need to think more like a team that can actually try and play a bit of football now. So first up was at home against Bristol Rovers. Uh, this was a strange one. As you can see, we played fantastically well and got a 3-1 victory. Perfect. Um, but there's more to it than that. We fell behind through Jack Blake early on in this match. And I actually started off uh, just seeing how things were going with the current strategy. And it was at that point when I made the change. The first thing I did at that point was take Chris Thorpe off of an advanced forward, which is what I was testing him on, and put him back to a deep line forward on support. And he didn't have much of an impact. But I still think we play better as a whole uh, with him being as a deep line forward still. And I still think that is actually the best role for this team. However... We got ourselves an equaliser through Liam Miller. I think it was right on the stroke of half time uh, to give us a nice level pegging at this point. Now, the change I made, uh, well, actually, I made a couple of changes. What changes did I make? Shorter passing, working the ball into the box and the DLP. We also have players running at defence because we've got a lot of decent dribblers in this team, particularly when Gribben plays as well. And I think that's made a difference for us as well. So those are the changes I made in this game. Shorter passing, work ball into the box and running at the defenders and whatnot. Uh, because I noticed that we were getting a lot of... Um, we weren't converting enough touches, basically. And I figured work ball into the box could help with that. I also noticed that a lot of our goals came from us keeping possession for a longer period of time. So us getting more of the ball for longer periods of time with working the ball into the box and whatnot seemed to help. The short passing allows the midfielders to really rack up their passing numbers too, which I think is definitely helping as well. Uh, Liam Miller, fantastic on the night. Two goals for him, one for Paris Magoma as well. Good, turned it around, 3-1 win. I was comfortable thinking, yes, we can go into the next game and build on this. And that's exactly what we did, going and winning 2-0 away at Mansfield. Again, you could see... Good amount of shots, decent amount of chances created. The key passes for days, just absolutely racking them up in this match, uh, which was fantastic yet again. Took us till the second half to break them down in this one with goals from Andy Davidson and Liam Miller again. 
The change I made in this one, they were playing a 4 4 2, and we were dominating the ball, as you can see, uh, with the shorter passing, but we turned it back to mixed for the second half uh, because we just weren't getting in behind. So I think that's a, a definite change. The other change I made was I brought on a new signing. Obviously, uh, you. Ethan O'Kane started this game, put in a really solid performance. But you might notice, I brought on Brandon Hanlon. Where did he come from, you might ask? Well, so this is Brandon Hanlon. You know I talked about him in the summer uh, as an option I was looking at at the same time as Liam Miller. And I had like £350,000 bid agreed with Grimsby for the player. I noticed that his contract was up at the end of the season and he was transfer listed for £0. So I put in a bid of £0 and Jill not Grimsby, Gillingham accepted the bid. Um, so we saved 350 grand on that. And because of that situation, he wasn't in a position to demand loads for wages either. Last season, or the end of this, uh, the start of this season, he wanted moon money, even with like clauses and stuff. I couldn't get him down. Whereas this time, he was happy to take a 1.1k, which is basically what we were paying Kane Hemmings. Um, so yeah, this guy is pacey. He's got that little extra bit of pace. He's still decent, got good passing, good vision, decent work rate. Finishing and dribbling, they're all right as well. Um, but, you know, he runs with the ball through the centre and moves into the channels. I think this guy could make a difference. And in the second half, he really, really did. We were able to ping the ball into him. He'd control it, spread it out wide and bomb into the box. And he was getting in there and he got an assist. Uh, I can't remember which goal it was. I think it was the first one he got an assist for. So he's, he was straight into the team and straight into the action. That's what I want to see from him. And for free, with, you know, a reasonably low wage, I couldn't really turn down the opportunity. We had to get it over the line on the last minute, though. That leaves the league looking like this. The other teams have started picking up wins as well. So we're still only four points inside the playoff spot. Uh, we're eight points behind second place Peterborough. I think the chances of us actually getting that are very, very slim. And of course, Oxford, uh, sorry, not Oxford, Birmingham are 15 points clear there. They have dropped a few points recently. It's just nice for us not to be drawing games all the time. Liam Miller, 18 league goals, still top scorer by quite some margin now. He and Davison right in there, Chatey up with his nine assists. He does need to get a few more. Uh, Akora, I think, picked up two assists against Bristol City as well. So it's nice to see him getting a few too. Player of the match awards, Molden still in there, had some more big bids for him in that period too. It's nice to see. I think we're finding a bit of stability again. Going to go back to extended for today's games to see but I feel like if we're not quite breaking through with the short passing, we can move it back to mixed and that should be able to mi mix things up a bit. Just looking at elsewhere, Peterborough are playing Bolton, so that is a tough, tough match. Birmingham are away at Scunthorpe, Walsall host Rochdale, so you feel like Walsall should probably win. Oxford host MK Dons, who we've got next. I feel like if we can beat Ipswich, that says something to me. You know, like the South End game, that's the kind of result we need today. So, changes that will need to be made for today. Um, I don't know how Ethan O'Kane's already got a heavy match load, despite playing one match. He said he needed a rest after one match. I, I don't get that. And he's got good stamina and stuff. So really strange. Anyway, do a quick pick here. Move some stuff around. Okoro. Uh, is it Okoro or Tilt? I feel like Okoro's actually played a bit better recently uh, than Che Tilt. So maybe he... Like, and as you can see, Che Tilt's fallen down the pecking order here. Maybe he deserves a chance here. In the middle... That's what I want to go with there. At the back, Poole and Gray will give him a little bit of a rest. And up top, I'm going to try it out. We're going to start with Brandon Hanlon today and see how he does from the start. He's not fully match fit yet, but he got a good half in against Mansfield. And I want to see what he can do today. On the bench, Murphy, O'Kane, Lafferty, Thorpe, Cameron John, Max Saunders, and of course, JTB, just as an option. So they've got their regen striker up top. And I believe he scored against us in the other game, which is a pain, but we must move on. Let's turn it off of comprehensive for now. We've got to extend it, otherwise this video will be too long. But we might change things if things start to go a little bit tits up. Hopefully that should change for the rest of the match. Okoro, can he find a good cross? He's not really found a good cross, but we might be able to get the second chance here. Booty, keep them penned in is what I like to see from us with this new style of play. Ball in, Davidson again. Space at the back post for Okoro. Oh, what a goal. John Okoro, 10 minutes gone here at Edgeley Park. Andy Davison limping around, provides the assist. John Okoro with the goal. Beautiful stuff. We kept them penned in after our corner. And that's the other thing I like about this. Um, we've got players on the edge of the box. He's completely free at the back post. Davison slides him in. Wonderful right footed strike. What a powerful effort that is. It's 1 0 to Stockport County. These are the wins we need to start racking up. And it did work against. Um, who was it? It worked against Mansfield. So we'll see. I don't know how many shots we've actually had from range, though. That's what I'm interested in. Long shots. Only two of the 11 have come from range. Against Mansfield, we were having a lot more. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Well saved from Louis Molden. I don't know how that even came about. We, we had the ball, and then the player just sort of lost it for no reason. First chance of the game for Ipswich, and it's the first real chance of the game. Davidson. Miller can bring it clear. Here we go. Hanlon can pick it up and run. Go on, Brandon. He's got a core at the back post. He has to find him, surely. A core Oh, what a chance that was for John Okoro. Nice work, though. Good break. Uh, but they're weirdly not playing those passes, which is strange. He could have made the tackle there, and he, he hasn't. This is going to be the goal, isn't it? 
Yep. I don't know why he didn't make a tackle. It was a perfectly good position for him to just slide in and win the ball. Ipswich have been the better team in the second half, and I think we're going to go back to short passing. But what? An... I don't understand what why Lafferty doesn't win the ball here. Like, he's got a simple tackle. It's a great ball down the wing. And then once this ball's crossed in, it's going to be Marcus Sheldon's. Oh, God. Okay, that's fine. Throws it in. Lafferty clears it away. Five minutes to go. The short passing definitely seemed to be the approach we needed to take. Sanders is all the way through. Yes! Max Sanders, of all people, scores his first ever goal. The Colonel gives us what will hopefully be the winner here against Ipswich. We've turned things back on again uh, since their equaliser. I, I think the short passing was definitely... This is a great run from Sanders. Just sees the space, drives into it, and what a strike that is. Bruno Bridges with, I think that's his fifth assist of the season in the league. More than last year in total. Brilliant stuff. Ro oh, damn it. Okay, we're going to have to let this situation play out. But with five minutes to go, we are back in front. Our home to whip switch. In oh, God. Sheldon's already through. I literally couldn't do anything about that. I I it wouldn't let me make any tactical changes. And now Ipswich have equalised directly from the goddamn kickoff. What was that, guys? Come on. <sighs> I'm still looking at this, though, as a positive performance. We've played well again on the night. Lots of chances created. Lots of shots. Probably the better side and probably deserve the win. Marcus Sheldon has mugged us off there. Right then, guys, we're back on the day of the MK Dons game. I've just been reflecting on the Ipswich match, and it's frustrating because the goals that they scored were our fault. It's Lafferty for not making that tackle in the midfield when he could have done, and we just switched off from the kickoff after we'd scored what we thought was going to be the winner. On another day, I think we win that game, and there's a lot of positives to be taken from that one. It wasn't like a, a poor performance from us. There was a chance for a Coro. We're still creating, and as long as we're creating, I'm not too bothered uh, about occasionally dropping points because you're not going to win every game. So we'll do a quick pick because some stuff's going to need to be shifted around, unfortunately. It's just a fact of life in this situation. Uh, firstly, is Gribben really fit again? Well, apparently, he is his match fit. Uh, I'm tempted, you know, to put... Gribbin as the deep line playmaker with Magoma and then Booty sitting a little bit deeper, frankly. Uh, and up top, obviously, will be Brandon Hanlon because Chris Thorpe has food poisoning. So on the bench, Murphy, Poole, Lafferty, JTB, Cameron John, Andy Davidson if we need him, and Ash Conway. But I still think we're in decent form and we should be able to do enough for the rest of this year to get into the playoffs. That's the hope. Because I do think we've got some slightly easier games now in the run. We've played a lot of teams that, towards the top half of the table lately. So hopefully today and in future. Bruno Bridges as well is now the only team leader at the club as our captain. I would love it if we went all run of the Premier League for him to actually play in all six divisions for the team because he's the only player now at the club that is capable of doing that, I think, because Scotty D left, of course. We'll see how we are after the half an hour mark uh, in terms of whether we could switch up the tactics a little bit. Miller going through a few people. Hanlon, switch it around the back, maybe? Magoma! Yes! Brandon Hanlon, that's almost identical to the goal that he set up for Andy Davidson uh, on his debut. We have the lead here away at Stadio, Stadio MK. Stadium MK. Miller, again, driving at people. Hanlon just holds the ball up so well here. I don't know how he wasn't offside, but he's not. Magoma makes the run beyond and puts it in the back of the net. It's MK Dons nil, Stockport County 1. Huge goal. Let's just see where we go from here. A few too many long shots, but we've definitely pulled this game back towards the end of the first half. Magoma, man of the match so far. We, I think we've nullified Aird a little bit, and it's definitely helped us get more possession back. Hopefully, we can start to win that battle in the second half and control the game a bit more. As we have the lead, so we don't need to do anything drastic. I, I'm not going to put it onto uh, more direct passing. I think for now, if we just stick to what we're good at and keep doing what we're doing, we might have a chance. Oh, no. Just as I say that, Akora is injured, and we have absolutely no options there really honestly i think our best bet is going to be to get brandon hanlon on the right here and bring someone else on up top like jtb that is the last thing we need what's his injury looking like potential groin injury that could actually be a period out I i'm a bit concerned now i think we're going to have to rely on hanlon doing some pa think about hanlon in that position is he is going to be able to attack people with a lot of pace jtb now running he's got hanlon into the space goes back from nerfville of all people hanlon there you go MK Dons nil, Stockport County 2, Brandon Hanlon, his ninth goal of the season in total, his first goal for us, he's got a goal and an assist today, uh, playing on that right-hand side, and we're now 2-0 up in this match, and hey, it's worked, this is great from JTB actually, uh, to pick up, I mean, admittedly, got a bit lucky there, I don't know why Nerfield was the man there, don't know where Miller had gone, doesn't matter, it's 2-0 to Stockport County, let's hang on to the win this time, lads, still, if they were to score now, it's, oh Christ, that must be a goal, what a block, oh my goodness, Louis Molden, 
give the man the medal now. That is insane goalkeeping. And I think he kept the second one out as well. We just need to get to the 90th minute. Molden still only on a seven. And they've got an injury. And it looks like we're about to get away from MK with a 2-0 victory. That, for me, is a really solid performance. The injury to Okoro does worry me. But goals from Paris Magoma and Brandon Hanlon. Man of the match. No, uh, uh, Nerville actually got it. But Hanlon was still very, very good on the night. That's what we needed. A solid performance with a clean sheet too. Fantastic stuff. Don't think I could have asked for much more in this match. And you could see that our goal difference is definitely rivaling the teams towards the top end rather than the teams around us. And that's basically like having an extra point. We are now officially four points into the playoffs and only four points off of second place Peterborough. And Okoro has got a groin strain in almost four to five weeks. So Che Tilt is going to have to step up now. Uh, ooh, I think Bolton would be a good one. They're a playoff rival. It would be too many games to do Peterborough. In fact, that's already like six off camera matches. Um... But we, these games are all sort of down the bottom of the league, other than Birmingham. And that's too few games, really. I think Bolton is a fair bet for the next live come. A nice big chunk of games off camera. You know, this is what I mean. We've got some e easy games. Apologies for that. Uh, games coming. Rochdale, 23rd. Barnet, 20th. Coventry, 21st. Fleetwood, 22nd. We're playing all of the teams at the bottom of the league. Is there a chance that we could string a run of wins together and really pull our way up towards that final promotion spot? I'm genuinely getting excited about the end of the season again now. I thought it was going to be a slog, but here we go. You never know. And even after that, at Plymouth, Colchester, Northampton, Burton. There's a lot of winnable games towards the end of the season. I think we were just playing a lot of teams towards the top half. And maybe, just maybe, we've found something that can make us even better. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, I think we've sorted ourselves out again. Drop a like on the video. That'd be awesome. Let me know where you think we're going to finish this season. The position, maybe even how many points. And uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at 6. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for a match against Bolton. One of the toughest games we've got left, but I, I want to pick up a win against them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.